Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's MargaretGeorgeToon.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? I've got a brand new coffee courtesy of your Kevin Weiss. Thank you very, very much, Kevin. Hang on, folks. This is first time, first time taking a sip of it. Hang on. Oh, boy, is that good. <laughs> Oh boy, is that good. That is really, really good. The the scent and the aroma is wonderful. My God, hang on, wow. That is really, really good. Um, Copper Moon Coffee, what I've got here is Southern Pecan. Oh my gosh, is this great. And as Kevin wrote, first of all, as usual, I enjoyed your Monday morning mailbag. Thank you very much, Kevin. Tomorrow, you should be getting a few coffee pods for a Monday morning mailbag. Copper Moon Southern Pecan. I'm hooked on this brand's products. I enjoyed these in the whole bean form. I hope the pods are as good. Oh, they're delightful. I uh, put this in my uh, K-Express, my current K-Express coffee maker, and I set it for 10 ounces and strong. And boy, oh boy, is that a good cup of coffee. My goodness. Now it is um, it is artificially flavored, okay? Just so you can just so you know, so that's why you're getting that little extra pecan aroma there. And as they say on their product page here, uh, Copper Moon Southern Pecan flavored coffee is a classic blend with flavor characteristics of creamy caramel and nutty pecans, reminiscent of homemade pie. <laughs> Absolutely, an absolutely wonderful, wonderful, delightful coffee. I'll let you get a screenshot of the side panel of the uh, the pods, the coffee pods box, the curd cup uh, box here, so you can kind of read later what they have to say about the company and how they started and that kind of information there. Really, really terrific, terrific brand of coffee. My thanks to uh, Kevin Weiss for very, very kindly kindly sending this along to the uh, program. Kevin's also going to be sharing a, a shave tip with us later on in the show. And uh, my gosh, as we like to say here on the show, a good hot coffee, a trusty mug, let the caffeine go to work, gentlemen, once more. Hang on. Yeah, I do. I really, really do enjoy that, um, the, uh, the pecan flavor. Now, this is very reminiscent of the Texas pecan uh, curd cups that uh, viewer Beth Jones sent us very, very kindly, all the way from Texas. This was uh, Cafe Olay. You can see those. This was also a flavored coffee. Really, really wonderful. Like the pecan flavored coffees. They really are wonderful. And uh, the Southern Pecan from Copper Moon is another delightful, delightful pecan uh, flavored coffee. Really, really terrific. Well, good morning to everyone, and thanks so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. Hey, if you're taking me along on your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. Really, really do appreciate it. If you're listening to the podcast this morning, thanks very much for tuning us in. Really do appreciate that. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, what a great coffee to get you going in the morning. I got to one more sip. Hang on. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, that is really, really terrific. So again, my thanks to uh, viewer Kevin Weiss for very, very kindly sending along one more time, uh, Copper Moon Southern Pecan uh, flavored coffee. Really, really terrific. Thanks again, Kevin. Boy, we got a great show for you this morning. I uh, got a great shaving tip coming up from uh, Kevin Weiss. Uh, we also have an update to the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. Uh, got some new contributions from Tom Donnarumma. That uh, prize package from uh, Farmhouse North and Jennifer Cook came in. Uh, that's I'm going to share that with you. What else? Oh, we got some new shave gear items. Big news in the, uh, I guess you could say, in the wet shaving world when it comes to uh, companies, that sort of thing. We've got that going on. Got some great, great refill comments regarding the Bic blade. Maybe you saw the review I did this past Friday with the Bic razor blade. So we have a little bit of discussion about that and uh, some uh, questions and comments. Uh, and oh yeah, some a little bit of vintage razor talk, that sort of thing. Yeah, really looking forward to the show this morning. Uh, so thanks very, very much for tuning in. And uh, once more, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. Great to see you. Kick back, relax. Let's talk a little bit of wet shaving. And let's get the show underway like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip.
Well, this morning's shaving tip comes from viewer Kevin Weiss. And as we mentioned earlier in the show, Kevin very, very kindly sent along Copper Moon Southern Pecan Coffee in the Keurig cup form. Really, really terrific, flavorful coffee. We'll have a link below where you can get to their website and check out all their coffee products. I also believe they sell their products on Amazon, Amazon amazon.com. At least when I was doing a, a search in my browser for their main website, I saw a listing for Amazon come up, I believe. If they do sell it on Amazon, I'll also provide that link below. So thanks again to uh, Kevin Weiss for sending along this really, really delightful coffee. Copper Moon Southern Pecan will have links below. Kevin also sent along a uh, shaving tip this morning. And he wrote, if you need a tip for a Monday morning mailbag, I'm not sure if this is common knowledge, but I was having issues with my Henson razor's grip when my hands were slick from soap. A friend recommended I run my fingers over my alum block for grip. I did, and it works great. Hey, thanks very much for the tip. Really do appreciate it, Kevin. This is a tip we've talked about in the past, and it's a tip that, uh, among some others, that I like to revisit because we have new viewers all the time, and they may not have seen every single episode of the Monday Morning Mailbag, and they may have missed this tip. So it's great to revisit this tip. And yeah, all you have to do is wet that alum block a little bit and rub your fingers over it and they become very, very tacky, very, very sticky and you can get a really, really good grip of a slick uh, razor handle. Uh, absolutely fantastic, fantastic shaving tip. So thanks very much for sending that along, Kevin. Really do appreciate it. He also sent this along as well uh, in the email. I was nosing around on YouTube and found this guy who actually did a head shave with a king oscillating razor. He jerry-rigged a regular blade and uses it on the video. He apparently has another video showing us how he did it. Check it out. He also provided uh, a link to the video, I, I guess, where he's uh, actually doing a shave. Uh, and you can get more information. This is uh, Subi Shave's channel, uh, where he takes a king oscillating razor and kind of reworks it somehow and puts in a, a regular blade. Uh, I haven't seen the video yet, but uh, Kevin, thanks very much for passing that along. Now, we mentioned this because Kevin Laird very, very kindly uh, gave this razor, this King Oscillating razor, to the channel. Uh, I met him at the um, Ohio Wet Shavers meetup, and we talked, and this was on the PIF table that he donated. Nobody wanted it, and it was there at the end of the meetup, and I asked him if I could uh, take it and show it on the show and that sort of thing, and he said, absolutely. Uh, and we talked about it in a previous Previous uh, uh, Monday morning mailbag, and these rollers here come in contact with your face. The rollers on top of the cap come in contact with your face, and they move that plate within the cap back and forth that is poking through on the base plate to the blade. So the blade oscillates back and forth, you know, left and right, left and right, uh, when you're shaving, just by just by holding the razor head up to your face and the downward motion uh, engages the rollers and then that oscillates the razor blade inside. Now, Kevin is sending something else along to the channel regarding the King Oscillating Razor. It hasn't arrived yet, but when it does, uh, we will definitely talk about it on the Monday Morning Mailbag, and I'm really excited to show that to you. So we'll kind of leave it at that. Uh, hopefully it will arrive here within the next couple of days and the next Monday Morning Mailbag. We will talk about it. Absolutely, really, really wonderful that he's sending it along. So uh, more on that later. But Kevin, for you and only you to say thank you for your uh, morning shaving tip this morning, an original signed George sketch. So please email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. And if you out there would like an original signed George sketch, just send me a shaving tip. Send that shaving tip to Monday Morning Mailbag. No, Monday Mailbag at gmail.com. <laughs> Monday Mailbag at gmail.com. Monday Mailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it here on the uh, Monday Morning Mailbag Shave Tip segment, you too will receive an original signed George sketch. So, Kevin, thanks very, very much for a great shaving tip, the coffee, and the other information regarding the King Oscillating Razor. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, we have an extra shaving tip this morning, and it comes from viewer Robert Ross. In the email that he sent me, the subject heading read, Shaving Tip, Three-Piece Razor Maintenance. 
Well, we always love to pass along care and maintenance tips uh, of our safety razors to all the viewers out there. So my thanks to Robert Ross for sending along this one. Uh, and he wrote, Hi, Mark. When I bought the Carve Overlander in aluminum a few months ago, I carefully read the instructions. Chris, the owner of Carve Shaving Company, recommends lubricating the threads of the razor with petroleum jelly. Rather than lubricate the threads directly, I squeeze a little white petroleum jelly directly into the threaded part of the handle. It is much easier and less messy. Any excess is simply wiped away with a tissue. It works great and keeps my razor in tip-top shape. I highly recommend you buy the white petroleum jelly in a convenient tube. That way you don't get it everywhere. It keeps your workspace nice and neat. I hope this helps your subscribers. Cheers, Bob Ross. Hey, Bob, thanks very, very much for a very, very helpful care and maintenance tip uh, for our safety razors. I happen to have the Carb Overlander here in, uh, in uh, brass. This came courtesy of viewer Fernie Beck. Thank you again, Fernie. And just to illustrate what Bob is talking about, rather than lubricate the middle threaded post on the cap, uh, just insert the petroleum jelly into the top of the handle here where it's threaded on the inside. And then that way uh, you can put it together, uh, less messy, and uh, the threaded post will get lubricated as will the interior of the threads uh, within the handle. So a really, really neat shaving tip. Thanks very much for passing it along, Robert. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, here's your weekly reminder that the Monday Morning Mailbag is also available as a podcast. Simply get up to your favorite streaming service and search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more, Monday Morning Mailbag and more, and the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast, as well as our other podcast, Second Cup, will come right up. Both of these podcasts are available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Google Podcasts. Again, just search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more. And both of those podcasts, the Monday Morning Mailbag and Second Cup, will come right up. They're available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Google Podcasts. Well, this Saturday is October Shave 2023 at Pasteur Pharmacy, 53 East 34th Street, New York, New York, 10016, starting at 10.30 a.m. That's right. This Saturday, October 21st, 2023, is October Shave Meetup at Pasteur Pharmacy. They are going to have artisans, delightful snacks and drinks, a lot of samples, new releases, exclusive discounts, raffles and giveaways, and tickets are free. We will link it below so you can get up there and get some information. If you're in the New York City area, check it out. The October Shave Meetup 2023 at Pasteur Pharmacy. Once more, 53 East 34th Street, New York, New York, 10016 at 10.30 a.m. This Saturday, October 21st, 2023. We will have the link below where you can get additional information. October Shave 2020, the October Shave Meetup 2023 at Pasteur Pharmacy in New York, New York. Well, we have an update to the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. We are in the home stretch. And I teased it in the opening of the show this morning that we have uh, two additional items. Actually, surprise, we have three additional items. <laughs> How about that? Didn't mean to uh, omit this one here that we're going to kick it off with, but it's also coffee related. And I, don't wanna, I did not want to confuse the coffee talk this morning. This very, very generously comes from viewer Mark Williams. My goodness, check out what he sent for the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. He sent a Black Rifle Coffee Company uh, complete mission fuel kit. These are coffee samples here. My gosh, absolutely fantastic. So we have four different uh, bags of coffee. No, actually, I have one, two. No, actually, we have five, four. We have one, two, three, four different bags of coffee right here from Black Rifle Coffee Company. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a sample bag and put it with um, 
you know, at least four prize packages. Kind of spread the wealth a little bit. Absolutely fantastic. We have a couple of prize packages that are going to have coffee mugs. So now you'll have coffee for those coffee mugs. And I've been uh, busy putting everything together and kind of uh, grouping all these prizes together. And uh, it looks like uh, uh, some of these prize packages are going to just be absolutely stuffed with some amazing, amazing wet shaving gear. Thanks to the very, very generous contributions of viewers out there. But my thanks to Mark Williams uh, for the Black Rifle Coffee Company uh, complete mission kit. This is a variety sampler, so we're going to take each of those bags and put them into at least four of the price packages. Uh, absolutely fantastic! I was really excited when I got this. I thought, "Wow, this is great." We're gonna, we're gonna, we, because we've got a couple of uh, coffee mugs that we're giving away. That's going to be part of some of the price packages. So now we have coffee to go with that. Absolutely fantastic! Thank you very, very much, Mark. Really, really do appreciate it. Uh, Jennifer Cook sent along. The, uh, the, the door prize, the, the, the giveaway prize that I won from the Cancer Research Fund that uh, David and Barb Kais had organized along with Todd Stanfield. I won that prize and, uh, from Farmhouse North, and I said I was going to donate it to the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Well, it arrived, and I wanted to show it to you um, right here. Here it is right here. We get, um, this is worth $100. This is absolutely amazing. Paulo Santo Shave Soap from Farmhouse North. Uh, right there, absolutely beautiful, beautiful scent. Well, here, I am going to sample it. I won't stick my nose in it. I'll just kind of, oh, yeah, that is very, very nice. Okay, there you go. <laughs> That's all the opening I will do on on the uh, on the items here, but I just want to get a, a little bit of, uh, of the scent. Absolutely beautiful. Very, very refined, very, very gentlemanly. Wonderful, wonderful scent. Uh, also, uh, sent along the uh, Palo Santo Aftershave Milk Gel. We talked about this in the uh, review I did on uh, Farmhouse, Farmhouse North's Aged Bourbon and Pear Shave Soap, uh, how I'm going to need to get some of this. And uh, this, is, this is their aftershave product right here. Uh, that's included, as well as as well as, as well as, as well as <laughs> Palo Santo uh, Cologne right here, EDP, and it comes in a spray bottle. How about that? Absolutely beautiful. My goodness. And uh, bar soap, uh, super fat smoking bar soap right there. And uh, an absolutely lovely, lovely candle. This is the Farmhouse North Citrus and Fur candle right here. I won't take it out of the box. I'll just show it to you inside the box here so you can kind of, well, okay, I'll take it out. It is glass. I want to be careful. So there it is right there. Okay, Farmhouse North, logo up there like that on top. Oops, don't want that to fall out. And you can see on the side label, Citrus and Fur. All right, so that's absolutely beautiful, beautiful prize package from Farmhouse North. And again, my thanks to uh, David and Barb Kais for donating uh, that uh, prize to the giveaway. Two chances to win in their giveaway for Cancer Research Fund. Uh, and uh, that was given away at the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup. And uh, it was the last door prize that, that was given away at the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup. And I won that two chances in their giveaway. And I said that if I won anything, it would go into this giveaway. And I did win something. And it was the last prize that they drew <laughs> uh, for, uh, during their giveaway. So <laughs> how about that? Uh, 11th hour in both drawings. That was really kind of neat. So my thanks to uh, David and Barb Kais. Uh, Todd Stanfield and also Jennifer Cook uh, for sending this along and, and uh, you know, just uh, allowing me to pass this on to the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. Absolutely wonderful. Now, we have one more item that uh, arrived just the other day from viewer Tom Donnarumma. Uh, absolutely wonderful. He sent along a Gentleman John Deluxe Wet Shave Kit. How about that? It comes with a, uh, a canvas dop, dop bag. Oh, let me just, I, I, think it has, I think I have to take it off this way here. Let me just take it off like this. There it is. I'll take that sleeve off and I'll put it back together. Don't worry. And uh, absolutely beautiful dop bag right here. Beautiful zippered dop bag. Uh, canvas with a le nice leather strap. And uh, we'll open this up here. And there it is. And inside, I'm going to take these items out. It's just stuffed with wet shaving gear. Inside, 
uh, is a, uh, an absolutely a, a safety razor in the box. You know what? Let's just take a look at it real quickly here. I'll just, okay, it's, you know what? It's wrapped in tissue. Okay, I will not open that up. Let's just leave it like that so that whoever wins this gets it nice and fresh. All right, but you get a safety razor. You also get a, uh, it looks like a shaving stand. My gosh, that's fantastic. Look at that. I get a shaving stand right there. Okay, and again, let's just take a look from the bottom. Okay, yeah, right here. Oh, we can could, we could pull this out. We can, uh, I think I can pull this one out. Here it is right here, yeah. There it is. There's a shaving stand. Boy, that's beautiful. That is really, really nice. Look at that. Looks like it's a gunmetal finish. Boy, that's beautiful. Wow. That's fantastic. Has a nice weighted base. Okay, let's put that back in. Uh, okay, there it go. Okay, that's back in the way it came out. Uh, we also have... A, a, a Gentleman John a shaving brush. Looks like it's a synthetic. I don't know if that's a synthetic or a badger brush. Uh, not entirely sure which kind of... What, what, I think it's a synthetic brush. Not sure. Feels like it might be synthetic. Yes. Absolutely beautiful. That's fantastic. Wow. That's really, really nice. Uh, a Gentleman John Allen block. That's a nice touch to include that. And uh, also a, uh, a pack of blades... Right there, kind of right on top, a pack of blades, uh, a glycerin shave soap puck, and a little shave bowl. How about that? Really, really terrific. Very, very nice. Thank you very, very much to uh, Tom Donnarumma for an absolutely wonderful uh, shaving kit uh, that uh, will be in the prize package pool. Uh, and uh, someone's going to win a really, really nice shaving kit, uh, something that will probably, not probably, will be a very, very nice for a beginner wet shaver. I want, I'm going to make sure I stay in front of the microphone here. My apologies to the podcast listeners if I drifted off a little bit. So we're going to put that all back together here. So it's, um, so it's uh, all back. To, well, we'll just, we'll put that, I don't know if the sleeve's going to, I'm going to have to adjust the sleeve and contents inside. But that's, that's what it is right there. The Gentleman John this is the Deluxe Wet Shave Kit. My thanks to Tom Donnarumma for very, very kindly sending that along. Thank you so very, very much. The prize package giveaway, the, the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway is being made possible through the very, very generous donations and contributions of some very, very wonderful viewers out there. So as always, my sincere thanks and heartfelt appreciation go out to Jimmy V Photography, Beth Jones, Tyler Fike, Charles Price, Alex Lopez, Scott Martin, James Sefton, George Haven, Jimmy Day, Bill Murphy, Mark Bagwell, Zachary Norton, Wesley Kirby, Heiko Shaves, Chris Witte, Caleb Bowers, Doug Thompson, Wally Pankowski, James Gazda, David and Barb Kais, Todd Stanfield, Jennifer Cook, Mark Williams, Tom Donnarumma, everyone at Pretech, and all the folks at Vikings Blade. Thank you all very, very much for your very generous contributions to the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. And I want to extend heartfelt gratitude to all our incredible YouTube viewers for your wonderful support. Whether you've liked, shared, subscribed, or left thoughtful comments, your engagement has been a driving force behind the channel's growth and success. Your dedication motivates me to create more content that I hope resonates with you. I truly appreciate your role in this journey, and I'm excited to keep delivering content that you love. Thank you for being an essential part of the Monday Morning Mailbag and this YouTube channel. Thank you so very, very much. Well, what do you know? Coffee's getting low that time of the show. Let's go back for a refill. Well, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. Hang on one moment. That really is a delightful, delightful cup of coffee. Once more, uh, courtesy of viewer Kevin Weiss, Copper Moon Coffee, Southern Pecan. Boy, is this a wonderful, wonderful coffee. Uh, also, a 
just a beautiful aroma, a wonderful aroma. You brew a cup of this and it just fills the room. <laughs> it is really, really wonderful. And I forgot to mention the uh, coffee mug I'm using this morning is my Captain's Choice coffee mug. This came courtesy of viewer Alex Lopez. Alex, thank you very, very much. And the reason why I'm using it is because, well, I noticed that uh, we're using Copper Moon Coffee. And if you look at that ship's wheel logo right there on the front of the mug, it has a rather copper color there, doesn't it? It looks, <laughs> looks like it's copper in color. Here, let me just put them side by side. Yeah, that matches up. It's a copper color uh, sailing ship wheel right there. That's why I'm using it this morning because I happened to see that and I thought, hey, you know, Copper Moon and a copper logo. Yeah, that goes along really, really well. Hang on, one more sip. Yeah, boy, that is really, really terrific. Again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me for uh, this segment of the refill. Um, boy, oh boy, oh boy, speaking of refill, we got some great comments uh, this morning. A lot of really, really good comments regarding the review I did on Farmhouse North uh, Aged Bourbon and Pear Shave Soap. Uh, that review ran last week. And boy, we got a lot, a lot of thoughtful comments uh, regarding that because I, I was using a... Uh, a, a scuttle and developing a warm lather and the lather result was a little different from what I've gotten in the past but I still got a really absolutely wonderful wonderful shave and the question is was it the heat from the scuttle was it was uh, did I use too much water uh you know that sort of thing uh but I really love this shave soap and uh the glide and the slickness are just excellent it just gave me such a wonderfully close shave so check it out farmhouse north aged bourbon and pear. And of course, we've got that beautiful uh, shaving kit in the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway from uh, Farmhouse North. So someone's going to win some really, really terrific shave soap and some other items, aftershave, cologne, that sort of thing. Anyhow, let's get to these refill comments. Scott Martin wrote, hey, Mark, great video. And I'm definitely going to be throwing Farmhouse North some business. You bring up an interesting point about tallow and heat. Almost 10 years ago, I created a thread on a now-defunct shaving forum about whether people had different results with tallow soaps in a hot scuttle versus a cold bowl. My experience was that tallow soaps in my hot scuttle kind of broke down more than so-called vegan soaps. I think the animal fat just reacts differently to heat. I never minded much. I just knew I'd be getting an airier, more meringue-like lather with a hot tallow shave. I contacted a very popular soap company that uses tallow exclusively, and the owner said they actually don't test their products in a scuttle, so he wasn't really sure. Either way, they both still work. Cheers, Scott. Yeah, Scott, again, I'm thinking it might have been the heat from the scuttle because I was using the travel scuttle from uh, Phoenix Shaving, and you can throw that in the microwave and really get the hot, the, the water hot inside that, inside that scuttle. And that's what I did. I took hot tap water, I, I, I loaded it with hot tap water, and then I put that in the microwave for about a, a minute, maybe 30 seconds should have been uh, the most I would have, uh, I, I should have uh, microwaved it at, because then it wouldn't have gotten, it would be nice and warm, but not really, really overly, overly hot. So maybe that's what happened. Um, this comes from JTMF9TK. That's the screen name. Uh, my apologies <laughs> if, I, if I got that wrong. Hi, Mark. Although I hit the like button on your vids, it's rare for me to comment on your shaves. I disagree that the heat of the scuttle affected the quality of that soap. In the past, you have used tallow soaps such as Sterling, and the lathers were quite thicker than farmhouse. I have gotten the same texture of lather as you did because I added too much water in the beginning of my lathering process, and that's what I surmise with your lather. Have a great week. Thanks very, very much for a very thoughtful comment, and I'm beginning to think that maybe I added a little too much water as well. Maybe the Farmhouse North shave soap isn't as thirsty as some of the other shave soaps uh, I've used. There is, I've always talked about shifting gears uh, trying to change up that uh, uh, water to soap ratio from soap to soap, shave cream to shave soap, shave soap to shave cream, that sort of thing. And maybe this was an example where I probably should have backed off on the water. Uh, absolutely. Bill Murphy wrote, uh, Mark Zerady, I have noticed that when I use a scuttle, the lather is a little thinner. 
I plan on using the collapsible bowl from Sterling on my first shave. It works great for me. Uh, again, maybe it was um, maybe maybe it was just a little too much water. Maybe it was the the water inside the scuttle was too hot. Uh, so I, you know what? That's part of the fun of doing the traditional wet shave, though. To be perfectly honest with you, even though it may have been an error on my part, uh, I still got a great shave. A lot of great slickness and a lot of great glide. And uh, the next shaves, the, the next shaves with this shave soap, uh, I'm going to uh, have a little more anticipation because I'm going to try to change up the routine a little bit, see if I get a better better lather. That's what's so great about the wet shave journey. You, you know, you sometimes run into these situations where you can change things up a little bit and get a really, really different lather result or get a different shave, well, shave, yeah, get a shave result, a little closer, maybe a little smoother, maybe not as smooth, whatever it is, all part of the, all part of the process. And uh, yeah, I got a great shave from Farmhouse North. Uh, I'm just going to try to change up the water to soap ratio and see what happens there. And I'm looking forward to doing that. I'm excited about that. Uh, Rodney Ripplinger wrote, Hi, Mark. I watched your video review on the Farmhouse North soap. Uh, I would have written you uh, earlier, but I wanted to shave with my puck of that uh, with my puck of that soap first. I think I know what happened. You may be right about the heat from the scuttle, but is but that is only part of it. All of Jennifer's soaps behave the same way since they are all created with the same base. When first working with the soap with your brush, in her soaps, there are a lot of small bubbles for whatever reason. As you continue to work up a lather, they gradually disappear as the soap becomes creamy. I think because you took such a large scoop of soap with your poker chip, you could not get to the point where the lather gets creamy. Uh, as more soap got mixed into the lather, uh, you got an influx of lather with these small bubbles. Perhaps the shape of the scuttle bowl may have also played a part. Uh, I don't know about that. You know what? That is a very, very good point too. Maybe I used too much soap. Maybe I just needed a little bit of soap. Uh, if you saw my video review I did this past Friday with uh, Phoenix Shaving Clown Fruit, I did eight swirls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I got enough lather for, uh, gosh, almost four passes, three passes and a touch-up, maybe even four passes. So yeah, I think Farmhouse North has that same quality where uh, don't use as much soap uh, and uh, you'll get a, a creamier lather and more lather because I, you know what? I did get a lot of lather from this, as I recall. I mean, I got a lot of lather. So I think I need to back off on the, uh, the, the, the load of soap. And going forward, I'll be, I'll be uh, doing a brush load with this and maybe going, you know, six to eight swirls with this and see how that works out. So thanks very much for that, Rodney. Really do appreciate it. Viewer Lee Nunes wrote, I'm a big fan of Farmhouse North soaps. Jennifer makes such great stuff. When I saw how much soap you scooped, I grabbed some popcorn. <laughs> Let me start over. That's funny. When I saw how much soap you scooped, I grabbed some popcorn to see how you were going to man manage all that lather. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's like that episode of the Brady Bunch. I've had issues with the heated scuttle as well. It makes most soaps foamy. As soon as it cools off, it gets back to normal. I think Doug's instructions for the scuttle involve heating it, then pouring the water out before lathering. I'm not entirely sure about that, but I'll have to check out Doug, uh, Douglas Smythe's um, uh, video on how he uses a scuttle. And there may be um, more than one approach to using a scuttle. Uh, would really be interested in knowing uh, some other wet shavers techniques with uh, using a scuttle. If you've got any, please comment below and let us know because I'm just... Uh, loading, uh, if I'm using a, a ceramic scuttle, uh, we'll, we'll take out the travel scuttle because that's microwavable. We're not going to talk about microwave. But just generally speaking with scuttles, no microwaves here because you don't want to put a ceramic, you do not want to put a ceramic scuttle in a microwave. What I, what I do is I put in hot, hot, hot tap water into the scuttle. I put the cork in and then I add hot water to the bowl and I let that sit for about five minutes or the equivalent of a, of a nice hot shower. Then I come back and I dump the water out of the bowl. Of course, the inner chamber still has that hot water there. And then I load my brush and then 
make my lather. So that's what works for me. Now, is there another approach other than that one? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, Keith Osmond wrote, oh, this is regarding the uh, timeless uh, razor and the 1918 blade and getting a razor with it. I, I happen to mention that I thought maybe using the timeless razor would work and it's not going to work. <laughs> you know, dummy me. He said, regarding, use the time, regarding using the timeless with the 1918 blade, is it a three post head? Uh, none were visible though. Uh, that doesn't mean it isn't. Uh, game changers are three posts without pass through. Just curious. You're absolutely right. The timeless razor is not a three post head. It is a uh, tab and slot razor head. Um, I don't know how I overlooked that. Uh, however, I'll give you an update on that. Well, here, let's just finish his, his uh, comment here. Love the black and white idea. Uh, no talkies then. Silent with caption panes would be next level. Uh, yeah, someone mentioned, I don't know who it was. If, if, if you're that person, please comment below. Uh, forgive me for not remembering the, the name. But someone said if I do the, uh, uh, when I, because I am going to do a shave with the 1918 blade. Uh, that's the update I'm going to give you here. Uh, when I do the shave, I'm going to uh, probably do it in black and white. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be great. Uh, it's like going back in time. Uh, as for a neutral razor, everyone's definition will likely be different. Just use a razor you're very familiar with so you can judge how the blades compare to one another. My first razor was a Henson Medium, and as I used it exclusively for months with different blades... I still use it for the first shave with a new blade to get a sense of whether it is on the sharper or milder side. As I originally used Astra SPs, I tend to think in terms of how a blade relates to that one. Henson plus Astra SP being my standard. Finally, thanks for sharing about the Enders and King Oscillating Razors. Nice to get a look at some rare items. Oh, my, absolutely my pleasure, but again, uh, these are being made possible uh, from some very, very generous uh, viewers, uh, Kevin Laird being uh, the individual who passed along the King Oscillating Razor. And again, stay tuned for the update. Uh, Kevin Weiss is sending something that, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward uh, to uh, that addition to the King Oscillating Razor. Now, uh, backing up to the uh, three-post head and talk about the razor and the 1918 blade, I have had some trepidation about using my grandfather's old type razor. Uh, I don't want to crack the handle, and I've been talking to Mark Bagwell and some other viewers, and um, you, the thinking is, as long as you're not over-tightening the handle and the razor head with that 1918 blade in there, you'll be okay. The problem comes when you over-tighten that handle, that's where it would cause a crack. Whereas with a modern blade that is thinner, it's less likely to happen because the 1918 blades are thicker. Um, well, what I decided to do was, and thanks again to Mark Bagwell for sending the link along, I bought a razor, uh, an old type razor on Etsy. And uh, this gentleman had about 13 of them available for about $23 a piece. And I bought one of those, and it's just going to be a random selection from his pile, and he's going he's gonna to send it, uh, uh, to me. Hopefully it'll get here in another week or so. Hang on one minute. Let me just let me just pause this and get you his website and his Etsy store. I thought I had it down over here and I don't. My apologies. Hang on. Okay, I found the information and I'll show you the Etsy storefront. So I bought this old type razor from Dapper Studio CC, your number one online source for vintage safety razors. Uh, and this gentleman is out of Nebraska. Uh, in the United States of America. And he had about 13 of these old type razors that were available. And uh, I bought one of them. And uh, hopefully it'll get here within the next week or so. Really looking forward to getting it and using it in the shave. My thinking is, if it has a slight crack in the handle, no problem. I'm going to put the blade in there and I'm going to tighten it down. And if the handle cracks more, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's not my grandfather's razor. And I very much wanted to use uh, a, a razor 
close to the um, era of the 1918 blade, a razor that is close to 100 years old, uh, that sort of thing. And I think my grandfather's razor is right there in the ballpark, maybe 1920, and I think the one that I'm going to be getting is probably 1920. There are some, some ways of actually getting close to the date, but suffice to say, it's going to be in that era. Uh, so it'll be a 100-year-old shave because the blade is, is 100 years old, 1918. My gosh, <laughs> I'm excited about using it now. Now that I have a razor that is going to be used, and uh, according to uh, the gentleman who runs Dapper Studio CC, I believe these razors have been cleaned and sanitized, that sort of thing. So I'm really, really looking forward to uh, using this razor. So we will link uh, his Etsy store below, and if you're looking for uh, a vintage razor. Check him out, Dapper Studio CC on Etsy. We'll, we'll we'll get a link to his Etsy store so you can check out everything that he has to offer up there. And again, he had about thirteen of these in a in, in a in a lot, and he was selling them for twenty three bucks each. Uh, and uh, I grabbed one, and uh, really, they were going fast. They were going fast. And my thanks to Mark Bagwell for very very kindly sending along that link. That led me to Dapper Studio CC and a really, really nice, nice gentleman. Uh, we exchanged uh, some messages regarding this razor and I told him what I was going to do. So uh, my hope is that when he grabs one, he'll send me one that's a little more cosmetically uh, appealing uh, for being on camera. That's the hope. And we'll see what happens. So yeah. That's really, really neat. So that's the update. So uh, as soon as that razor arrives, we will be going forward with the shave. And uh, uh, I've got some ideas on how I'm going to do the video. Black and white is an absolutely great, great idea, great approach to it. So yeah, uh, thanks very much for those comments, uh, Keith, uh, regarding the 1918 blade. Uh, neutral razors. Now the neutral razor comments that Keith made were in regards to a viewer in a previous Monday, ma Monday morning mailbag wanting to find a neutral razor. And uh, I suggested just getting an adjustable razor and just adjusting it right in the middle. That would be neutral. So uh, Keith very, very kindly sent along his comments and his thoughts. Really, really do appreciate that. Uh, Vincent9172 uh, wrote, Hey, Mark, I've always wondered how you take your coffee. Black, cream and sugar? What's your idea? Uh, balance, mixture? Uh, actually, Vincent, uh, I take my coffee black. I like my coffee black. Every once in a while... Uh, maybe a little bit of uh, milk, a little bit of half and half, something like that every once in a blue moon. Uh, I might use, um, what's the sweetener I use? Hang on one minute. Let me get the, I'll show you the sweetener that I got as a, as a gift. Hang every on once, here it is. <laughs> I'm back. Every once in a while, I'll use a little bit of the organic agave five right here. I'll use this. This is good stuff. Only five calories and it's a, a low glycemic uh, sweetener. So there it is. So if you're looking for something other than sugar, check this one out. It's not bad. And uh, I can't remember what it is, maybe two teaspoons, something like that, or two tablespoons or whatever it is. I just kind of put it in there and sweeten it to taste. But uh, yeah, there it is right there. Organic, organic, <laughs> organic agave five. That's what it's called, agave five. So uh, I'll uh, try to find this on Amazon and I'll link it below. It does need to be refrigerated. So that came out of my refrigerator. So after we wrap this up, this is going back into the fridge. I might put a little bit in the coffee here <laughs> as we go along. So yeah, that's it, Vincent. Uh, I like to take my coffee black. And if I use a little sweetener, maybe sometimes a little sugar, maybe a little time, sometimes a little half and half or a little bit of milk uh, and uh, sometimes uh, agave five. So uh, that's really, really, uh, uh, this is a nice, nice alternative to sugar is what I'm saying. Scott Martin wrote, hi, Mark. Thanks as usual for all the hard work you do to make Monday mornings fun. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, very kind, those very, very kind words, Scott. Really do appreciate it. I have to say that was a wonderful Shave Den visit today and the organization was top notch. This was Tom Donnarumma's Shave Den. We featured it last week. If you missed it, get back to last week's episode. It is absolutely wonderful. I agree. Top notch. Uh, especially his incredible brush collection. Also, regarding your preference to only use your blades for three or so shaves, I just wanted you to know that I'm in your camp. In fact, I have always been a one and done shaver for a few reasons. I like the assurance that I'm getting that blade at top performance every single shave and not wondering, have I taken this one too far or should I keep going? I never have to think about it. After a shave, 
I clean my Sterling Soap stainless razor, pop in a brand new razor. Oh, I guess it's razor blade. Pop in a new, brand new razor blade and know that my next shave is going to be top quality. Also, I love buying every kind of blade from countries all over the world like Egypt, Pakistan, India, England, etc. It's really fun. And finally, blades are cheap. Enough said. Have a great week. Scott, Scott, I agree. It is absolutely fantastic buying different blades from around the world. I I love that as well. Yeah, I agree. That's another fun part of the traditional wet shave. You can mix and match uh, razor blades and razors, that sort of thing. But uh, the really great thing is just buying some exotic razor blades from a far-flung corner of the world that you never heard of and uh, using them for the first time it really it's rather exciting it really is so i agree love trying different blades from around the world absolutely uh t man 2217 wrote mark your channel is growing so fast by leaps and bounds it seems i think it is all well deserved well thank you very much for that i appreciate that but as as i say the viewers make this channel. I mean, absolutely. Without the viewers, I wouldn't have a channel. Uh, so uh, my thanks to everyone out there who shares, likes, tunes in, leaves wonderful comments. Uh, I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, you produce valuable content for the wet shavers who watch videos on YouTube. You review products and give your honest thoughts and opinions and bring new shaving products to the attention of your viewers so that they can decide if those products are worth purchasing. I myself bought two of the Ascension razors from Phoenix Shaving based partly on your review of those razors, the Select and the Stainless Steel versions, and they are the razors I use the most. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you very much. Uh, I also started using brushes and CK6 soaps from Phoenix Shaving based on your recommendations and high appraisal of those products. And I have found that you were right. Speaking of Phoenix Shaving... Have you heard of their newest Scuttle release that's out now? It looks amazing. I would have bought one, but it looks big, and I honestly don't really have anywhere to put it, so I have to hold off for now. Uh, when the weather cools off, I might decide to set the hook and buy one so I can have a warm lather during the cold season this year. Thank you for all the hard work you put into your channel and your videos, Mark. The care you have for this really shines in your positive attitude on and off camera, and in the quantity and quality of your videos. Uh, T-Man, thank you so very, very much for the kind words. But again, it all goes back to the viewers. The viewers make this channel. Uh, without the viewers, uh, there would be no channel. So uh, my thanks to all the viewers out there for liking, for sharing, sub for subscribing, for commenting, for contributing in many, many different ways. Uh, and I think the only thing I can be accused of is that I like everything that comes into the shave den. <laughs> and I've seen some of those comments. But the truth is, uh, wet shaving gear is of, is of such high quality, uh, you can't help but like it. That's been my attitude. And of course, your mileage may vary applies here. Uh, so with the, ex with, the, with, the, with the exception of a few items, I think, generally speaking, everyone has a good experience from a lot of the items that uh, the channel has reviewed and has, has shown you, uh, generally speaking. Um, this past Friday, I did a shave with a Bic razor blade. Uh, these right here, the Chrome Platinum Blades. And uh, our next comment here, uh, one of the viewers shares his thoughts about this. Uh, I have found, and I believe I mentioned it in the, in the video review, this is definitely a your mileage may vary kind of blade. It falls into that category. There are wet shavers out there that love this blade. Uh, Jimmy V uh, loves this blade. Chuck Price loves this blade. And uh, there are some other wet shavers out there that just absolutely do not like this blade at all. And uh, I'm very happy to point that out, that uh, this particular blade, your mileage may vary. I like it. I got some, matter of fact, I used it before cameras rolled and I got a really, really nice shave with it. So more on that in just a moment. And T-Man, thank you so very, very much for the kind words. I really, really do appreciate it. Now, Al Spencer wrote, Mark, bunch of thoughts that come to mind while watching you today. Here's a couple. 
Uh, number one, vintage shave. It would be neat if you could find a vintage soap to better appreciate what we now have today. Uh, doing the shave in black and white was a great idea. Also, it might be a good idea to put a drop of mineral oil on the threads of your old Gillette. Hey, Al, thanks very, very much for those suggestions. And a vintage soap. I happen to have an old vintage puck of Williams uh, shave soap from like 1970, 1972, somewhere in there. Uh, so maybe I should pull that one out and use that. That would be that would be great. I've been meaning to use it for a long time. This might be the perfect opportunity to use it. Even though it's not 100 years old, you know what? It's, it's uh, half a century, right? So <laughs> why not? Uh, number two, Bic Chrome Platinum Blades. Talk about your mileage may vary. I have tried this blade in five different razors, and to me, it was just terrible. They are in my do not use collection. Go figure. Well, again, there you go. Uh, that's, again, uh, the, your mileage may vary, but that's okay. I mean, uh, it, didn't, it doesn't work for Al, but it works for me. It works for uh, Chuck. It works for Jimmy V. I'm sure there are other viewers out there that will have this in their do not use. And that applies to a lot of different other razor blades out there as well. But again, that's the, the great attraction of the traditional wet shave. When you hit on a razor blade, a razor and blade combination that worked for you, wow, <laughs> it's a great feeling. And sometimes you hit on something that not so much, so you don't, so you don't use that again. You, you kind of put that in the back of your mind and not use it. Uh, three, I'm thinking the internet is what has turned shaving into the phenomenon that it is today. I remember in the 60s as a young 18-year-old, men shaved because they were expected to and it was just part of the everyday routine. United States Air Force basic training was my first experience of a BBS. Al, thank you very much for your service. He continues here. At the morning inspection, if the drill sergeant found one whisker, he would make you go back and shave as many times that it took for that clean shave. Lots of blood. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it really has evolved because of the internet. Very, very good point. Uh, and uh, again, thank you very much for your service, Al. I really do appreciate it. Uh, number four, blade and razor comparison. I've been keeping an Excel spreadsheet comparing blades, razors, and three different soaps, Sterling, CK1, and CK6. I'm discovering that there can be different results when using some blade razor combination and just change soaps. How about that, folks? Uh, here's a screenshot of Al's uh, spreadsheet absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing this, Al. Really do appreciate it. Again, another aspect of the wet shaving journey that is just so darn fun, so darn informative, absolutely wonderful. Thanks thanks very much for sharing that, Al. Really, really do appreciate it. I uh, hope this is not too long. Uh, it's just that you cover so many interesting topics, it's hard not to comment. Thanks for another great 3MB. Al, Al, absolutely wonderful. Uh, I'm absolutely happy to share your comments. Not too long at all. And uh, thanks so much for sending them along. And thanks very much for sending along that spreadsheet. I know it's going to inspire some other wet shavers out there to do the same thing. Absolutely wonderful. And that wraps up another refill segment for this week. Thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Well, this past week, I got a couple of messages in my inbox. Uh, one from uh, Chuck Price, who wrote, Mark, did you see this? Big news, Chuck. And also from Stanley Piaskowski, who wrote, Hey, Mark, check this out. Fresh off the presses. What are they referring to? Well, Black Land Razor acquires above the tie. That's right. Uh, it was just recently that we got the news that Above the Tie was going out of business. We were talking about getting up there. They had a, a big going out of business sale. I was able to acquire the uh, Windsor Pro with the SB90 base plate, stainless steel razor. I used this in the review I did of uh, Clown Fruit and the big uh, razor blade uh, this past Friday, and uh, it did an absolutely wonderful job. Uh, I described it as a medium aggressive razor. It is somewhere between six and nine, but uh, some regard it as being more on the aggressive side. Others regard it being a little milder, probably a six or seven. Uh, I find it to be very, very smooth. I don't know if it's really a nine, 
But uh, it's definitely up there, but it's really, really very, very smooth. And I happen to use the Bic Chrome Platinum Blade in it, and I got a really, really wonderful, wonderful shave. Uh, and it is an absolutely beautiful performing razor. I also happen to have this in aluminum as well. And I, I acquired both of these razors when they were going out of business. And I was really sorry to see it because this is a razor that I had always wanted to purchase. And I thought, well, you know, they're always going to be in business. And when viewers were telling me that they were closing their doors, uh, you know, I, I went up there to see if I could get something. And luckily, I did get a stainless steel razor. Now, because they were overwhelmed with orders, some people got a refund, some people got a razor. Uh, I guess I got it under the wire and was able to get the stainless steel Windsor Pro. So this is absolutely wonderful news that Above the Tie is coming back because Black Land Razor is acquiring them. Now, they sent out an announcement, and in part they said, Earlier this year, Mariah and Matt of Above the Tie made the difficult decision to close the business after more than 12 years of serving the wet shaving community. I believe a brand this impactful with such a rich legacy deserves another chance. The community is better off with Above the Tie in it, and I knew nobody could provide a better home for Above the Tie than Blackland. Working hand-in-hand -hand with Mariah and Matt, we've reached an agreement for Blackland to acquire Above the Tie. Now, in part, Mariah and Matt wrote this. We're thrilled to share that Blackland is acquiring Above the Tie. We believe Blackland, like us, cares about quality, innovation, and doing things right. We trust them to keep the Above the Tie spirit alive and to keep delivering the quality products you love. Blackland Razor goes on to say, In 2024, we are relaunching Above the Tie. It will live on as a separate and distinct brand, but will operate under the Blackland roof and will be run by the Blackland team. So there you go. Blackland Razor is acquiring Above the Tie, and they're launching it in 2024. So if you missed out on getting one of these wonderful Above the Tie Razors, they're going to be back in business. They're going to be operating as part of Blackland Razors, and you'll be able to get a, 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 an Above the Tie Razor uh, because uh, Blackland Razor is acquired Above the Tie. How about that? That really is big, big news. So uh, we look forward to seeing them launch. And when they do get close to launch time, uh, we'll have an announcement here. I'm sure that a lot of viewers will keep an eagle eye out and send along word when that happens. So thanks again to Chuck Price and Stanley Piaskowski for the heads up on uh, the big, big news that Blackland Razor uh, has acquired above the tie. And in 2024, we will be seeing Above the Tie Razors once more. Thanks again, gentlemen. Really do appreciate it. Well, during the refill segment, viewer T-Man mentioned that Phoenix Shaving has a brand new scuttle. That's absolutely correct. It's a new upgrade from the Dreamscape scuttle. Uh, they now have the Spacescape Lather Scuttle 4.0, premium porcelain hand-glazed ceramic my Phoenix Shaving, and as they write on the product page, and now, the moment you have all been waiting for. For many, their first affordable scuttle was our little darling, the Crown King Scuttle. The goal at that time was to create a high-quality scuttle that would fit everybody's budget and looked kind of vintage, too. Needless to say, it was a huge success and really turned a lot of folks onto hot lather. Mission accomplished. However, over the years, we have received much feedback, as expected, and once more put it to good use in an effort to give our loyal customers and the shave community what they want. So back to the drawing board we went. We came back with the Desert Scape Scuttle 2.0, an even larger scuttle. Suddenly, armed with more feedback during its release, we made sure to take notes and then delivered an even better version on the next run with the Dreamscape Scuttle 3.0. The Dreamscape was not only another super value, but a scuttle to be reckoned with. Well, folks, after it sold out, rather than just reorder it and rest on our laurels, once more we decided to tweak this larger lather machine even more, redefining the vertical agitators and ridges within the bowl. Next, we chose an even more epic hand glaze style with a slight handle comfort modification. Lastly, we upgraded the material. 
While it's true that both the Desertscape and Dreamscape Scuttle were solid and robust brutes, our latest porcelain ceramic edition is by far the most durable. Dear Shave Cadets, meet the Spacescape Lather Scuttle 4.0. And it comes in at a really, really nice price point. And here are the specs on the new Spacescape Lather Scuttle 4.0. Uh, each is unique and hand glazed, a wide 5 inch mouth, a deep 3 inch lather bowl, no more side logo, beautiful durable premium porcelain, raised vert ridges, not digs, 18 ounce capacity, real solid cork included, ready for the best part, it's under $30. That's when I said <laughs> it comes at a really, really nice price point, under $30. So check it out. A brand new scuttle from Phoenix Shaving, an upgrade from the Dreamscape scuttle. This is the new Spacescape Lather Scuttle 4.0. We'll have links below so you can check it out. Bob LaRoe checked in with a new find, uh, and he writes, As you know, Lubriderm is no longer making their men's 3-in-1 lotion, so I discovered Palmer's at the PX. Have you tried it? I'll let you know what I think of it. Palmer's Cocoa Butter Formula Men's 3-in-1 Body Lotion. Okay, so it is a bit thicker than most balms, has a pleasant and not strong fragrance, and feels soothing. Hey, Bob, thanks very, very much for this, folks. If you're looking for an alternative for uh, an aftershave balm, check out Palmer's Cocoa Butter Formula Men's 3-in-1 Body Lotion. We'll have a link to it below. Thanks again, Bob. Really do appreciate it. Okay, before I forget, want to mention to you once more, Clown Fruit from Phoenix Shaving is back. Uh, this was featured in a review this past Friday with the Bic Chrome Platinum Razor Blade and the Above the Tie Razor. So, uh, you know, Above the Tie is back. Clown Fruit is back as well. So it's available right now on the Phoenix Shaving website. Check it out. It's an absolutely wonderful, wonderful scent. I used this before cameras rolled. My gosh, is this an absolutely beautiful, beautiful scent. And you know, uh, the first time I used this was three years ago. And uh, I just made sure to uh, make sure it was dry and to uh, make sure that the lid was secure when I stored it. And you know what? When I opened it up for the review this past Friday, I mean, the scent is still there. It's absolutely beautiful. It is very, very present. I don't think, I don't think I've lost any of the scent at all. Absolutely, and the same can be said for the uh, aftershave and cologne. Absolutely wonderful. And you know this is uh, an older version because the uh, the restrictor in the bottle is built in. You know, Phoenix Shaving is using the plaster re restrictors now. This is one of their older bottles that uses the built-in restrictor, built right in, molded right into the glass bottle. So uh, that's definitely a keeper. I'm gonna. <laughs> Hang on to some of the bottles I have with the uh, built-in restrictors, absolutely. But just want to let you know that Clown Fruit is back. Check it out. It's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful scent. Speaking of Phoenix Shaving Shave Soaps, uh, we get this uh, mini review from viewer Bill Murphy on Atomic Pumpkin, uh, a wonderful Halloween, autumn, seasonal release. Uh, and Bill writes, I forgot to add my comments about Atomic Pumpkin in my last email. We got back from our vacation too late to pick up our mail from the post office, so I had to wait an extra day to get my first shave with Atomic Pumpkin. On Sunday, I had my first shave with Atomic Pumpkin, and what a fantastic scent. I was never a fan of Bay Rum until I tried a sample of Phoenix Shaving's Atomic Bay Rum, and the addition of the pumpkin spice scent just made it my favorite scent. Most importantly, my wife also loves it. I immediately ordered more for myself and some for my brother-in-law, along with Cider House 5 and Chocolate Bourbon as a thank you gift for their hospitality during our recent visit. 
I also ordered shampoo, deodorant, and body soap in Atomic Pumpkin. What a great scent. Thanks, uh, Bill. Wow, Bill, thanks very, very much for a great review on Atomic Pumpkin. Uh, a wonderful autumn Halloween seasonal release. Folks, check it out. We'll have a link below. It sounds absolutely wonderful. And yes, I'm a big fan of Atomic Age Bay Rum as well. And the addition of the pumpkin scent sounds absolutely amazing uh, in Atomic Pumpkin. Thanks again, Bill. Really do appreciate it. Now, earlier in the show, we talked about the Bic Chrome Platinum Razor Blades and how it's a blade that uh, is very much a Euro mileage may vary, love them, hate them kind of a situation. Uh, I mentioned that Jimmy V likes these blades a lot, as does Chuck Price. Well, those gentlemen passed along the following comments uh, as a rather uh, mini review. Uh, and here's what Jimmy V wrote about the uh, Bic Chrome Platinum Blades. Hi, Mark. These are great blades. I saw you hold up a tuck and said to myself, Self, we need to try these. So I ordered a couple of tucks and had my first shave with one this morning. Now, I can't remember if you held up the yellow 7 o'clock or Bic. In any case, this is about the Bic Yellow Chrome Platinum. No, that's exactly the blade we're talking about, Jimmy. I used my Henson V2 TI-22 Medium, whipped up some Phoenix Shaving The Battle Shave Soap, and went to work on three days' growth. It went great. First pass with the grain got close to socially acceptable. Second pass across the grain, it was more than socially acceptable. It was practically done. No tugging, lots of blade sound, but no feel. Literally, no alum zing or sting. No weepers, just a smooth shave. Great blades. Have a happy Wednesday, Jimmy. Jimmy, I'm so glad you like these blades. I like them too. I like them a lot. And as I mentioned in my review, I think the key is, to me, and I'm going to try them in a variety of razors, but so far, as the razor has increased in efficiency and aggression, uh, I got better and better shaves with the big blade. Now, I might get some good shaves with mild razors too. I think it's a great blade. I really, really enjoyed it. And again, I used this blade before cameras rolled, and I used it in the Timeless Razor, Titanium Razor, with the, uh, I believe it's a 0.95 blade gap. So it's got a little bit of growl, and it was an absolutely wonderful, wonderful shave. The shave I had, very much... Uh, similar to what you just described. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, Chuck Price added the following comments uh, as well because I asked him, uh, you know, if this was the blade he was talking about, and I sent him a picture, and he said, and he said, yes, that's them, just as sharp as a feather, but smoother, and they last longer. Well, that's great to know as well. Uh, a little bit longer lasting blade than the than the feather blades. We'll have a link to where you can get these on Amazon. Uh, they're not that cheap. I think it's about 20 bucks for a hundred of them. Uh, maybe that price will be coming down uh, in the near future. I don't know. Uh, keep an eye on that price, see if it fluctuates any. But yeah, I got an absolutely wonderful, wonderful shave with them. I like these a lot. And uh, yeah, just as Jimmy described in his review, check out my review that ran this past Friday. Uh, I used the Big Blade. I used it in the Above the Tie Razor. And uh, I used also a Clown Fruit. Uh, shave soap from Phoenix Shaving. Really, really terrific, terrific shave. Uh, the, the the takeaway from uh, the shave on Friday, what I'll repeat here is, is that uh, it was smooth and comfortable. That's the thing. Really, really smooth and comfortable and very, very uh, nicely close. Let me put it to you that way. Nicely close. And uh, my first pass uh, in this past review, uh, on, on Friday's review, uh, my pass was on the cusp of being socially acceptable. Second pass, uh, the shave was done. The shave was done. I think I was in darn fine shave territory, approaching BBS. And in my book, that's usually a shave that is completed. I did a third pass and it ended up being BBS. Uh, before cameras rolled, again, I used the Timeless Titanium uh, Razor. And uh, my gosh, uh, I did three passes. It was done after two passes. I think I was right there on the cusp of BBS. The third pass took me to BBS. 
and an absolutely wonderful result. So yeah, I guess you can say I'm liking these blades a lot. However, I recognize that a lot of wet shavers out there, they, they, this blade is not agreeable to them. So you know what? Let me emphasize here right now, your mileage may vary. I think it's safe to say that there are a lot of blades out there, and Astra blades come to mind, that are universally accepted by the wet shaving community. I don't think anybody has gotten a bad shave with an Astra razor blade. If you've gotten a bad shave with an Astra razor blade, you don't like Astra razor blades, let me know in the comments below. would really be interested because my general thinking is, is that everyone gets a nice shave with an Astra razor blade. These Bic Chrome Platinum razor blades, well, you know what? Some love them, some hate them, or they don't like them as much. Let me put it you that way. But uh, my thanks to Jimmy V and Chuck Price for some great comments regarding the Bic Chrome Platinum razor blades. I hope that serves as some helpful additional information to a lot of wet shavers out there uh, in making a decision whether or not to try these razor blades. Thanks again, gentlemen. Really do appreciate it. Well, viewer Chuck Price has expressed his fondness for Ogallala Bay Rum Shave Soap and After Shave. Now, coincidentally, at the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup this past September 30th, uh, in Hilliard, Ohio, at River's Edge Cutlery. Uh, within that store, there was a wet shaving gear selection. And lo and behold, what did they have there? Ogallala Bay Rum Shave Soap and Ogallala Bay Rum Aftershave. How about that? And I went ahead and picked these items up as well as a couple of others, and we'll talk about those in future Monday morning mailbags. But for now, we're going to talk about Ogallala Bay Rum Shave Soap. Now, it's a four and a half ounce puck, no bowl or tub, anything like that. But look at the price $6.99. How about that? And I haven't taken, I have not taken it out of its plastic wrap yet. And uh, the Bay Rum scent still comes right through. It's absolutely wonderful. And again, it's a generous four and a half ounce puck. It is very, very hard. So I'm going to have to get a, uh, a bowl or a mug or something like that to, uh, to put that in. Uh, really looking forward to using this one. And of course, here is the uh, Bay Rum aftershave right here. It comes with a uh, spray top right there. Uh, and the price on this, uh, $11.99. How about that? Now, this is a pre-shave, after-shave, and skin toner. That's how they're marketing it right here. How about that? So really looking forward to using and reviewing this one. And uh, the information uh, the information tag, little card that comes on the after-shave here is uh, from 1870 to 1885, Ogallala was the destination of countless cowboys driving cattle north from Texas to the railhead. It's a sure bet that as the boys hit town, one of their first stops was a barber shop uh, for a bath, shave, and haircut. After being splashed quite generously with the barber's own special mix of bay rum, he was ready to hit the saloon and talk to the young ladies who were anxious to sell him drinks. Uh, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so that's the inspiration for the name Ogallala, and there's some additional information there. Uh, and we'll share that with you uh, in a graphic here. I'll let you take a look at it. Get a screenshot of it there if you want to read more of it later on right there. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to using and reviewing Ogallala uh, Bay Rum Shaving Soap and After Shave available at River's Edge Cutlery in Hilliard, Ohio. That's the greater Columbus, Ohio area. So if you find yourself in that part of the uh, the state of Ohio, stop in if you're interested in getting some Ogallala Bay Rum Shave Soap and Aftershave Splash. I was delighted to see this on their shelves there with all their other wet shave gear offerings uh, because I was thinking about buying it from Amazon and I was kind of going back and forth and that sort of thing. And when I went to the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup, there it was, right on the shelf, and I had to get, I had to get some. And we got a couple of other items that we'll be sharing again with you in future uh, upcoming Monday morning mailbag. So thanks again to Chuck Price for recommending Ogallala Bay Rum Shave Soap and Aftershave. We'll get a review uh, uh, done on this. I'm really looking forward to using it. And uh, it just has a great Bay Rum scent. Thanks again, Chuck. Really do appreciate it. We'll have links to these 
uh, on Amazon if you want to check them out and get some further information. Well, here is kind of a late-breaking item. Uh, it's going to end soon, but I thought I'd mention it because there's still time to get something from Mercur on their website. They're having a 10% store-wide sale going on right now. Now, the code is FALL23, capital F, capital A, capital L, capital L, 23. The number's 23, 23, FALL23. And the code must be redeemed by Monday, October 16, 2023, at 11.59 Central Standard Time. Quantities limited, no rain checks. So you still have time to get over to the McCurr 10% uh, store-wide sale uh, and get an item if you've been thinking about buying a McCurr razor or some other wet shaving gear item from them. Uh, you'll get 10% off store-wide sale going on right now. Just use the code FALL23. Again, this ends at 11.59 Central Standard Time. So you still have time to get up there and get something. That's why we're mentioning it. It was a, it was, uh, it was a sale that was going on all weekend long. And uh, I'm happy to mention it this morning uh, in the Monday morning mailbag uh, because you still have time to take advantage of it. 10% store-wide sale, uh, Mercur, at uh, MercurShave.com. That's where you go, MercurShave.com. That's the website, MercurShave.com, M-E-R-K-U-R-S-H-A-V-E.com. For everyone listening to the podcast, MercurShave.com. Use the code FALL23. And that wraps up this week's look at new wet shaving gear. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's get to some of these questions and comments. Uh, this comes from viewer Tyler Fike, and he writes, Hi, Mark. Well, I've now fallen down the vintage rabbit hole. I was doing well with not purchasing anything, but then I found Etsy, laugh out loud. I now own four vintage Gillettes. I've included a picture down below. From left to right, they are a 1958 D4 Fat Boy. Wow, that's a great find. A 1959 E3 Fat Boy. A 1962 H1 Slim and a 1966 L4 Slim. They are all in fantastic shape and shave beautifully. They really don't make things like they used to. Thought you may enjoy seeing them. Take care and God bless Tyler. Tyler, congratulations. Those are four wonderful, wonderful vintage razors. Absolutely fantastic. The two fat boys especially. I think that I think there was a great, great finds. Absolutely wonderful. And folks, if you have any favorite vintage razors that you've come across and want to share them with uh, your fellow wet shavers, send them into the Monday Morning Mailbag, a picture and a brief description, and we'll share them here in the questions and comments segment uh, because I know everyone likes to see what they what what other wet shavers may have come across and these are absolutely wonderful and the fact they're in such great shape and deliver such great shaves absolutely wonderful tyler thanks very much for sending along the photo and sharing the sharing their your comments about them and 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 finding them and yeah etsy is a wonderful place to find vintage razors as you know earlier in the show we talked about my finding an old type razor for very little money uh, from one of the Etsy sellers. So, uh, yeah, uh, congratulations and enjoy those razors. Now, speaking of vintage razors, I had to show you this. Mark Bagwell very, very kindly sent along this vintage ad. I believe he, uh, I believe he grabbed this from the Razor Emporium website. So my, my thanks to Matt Pasarsik as well for this. Uh, here is an ad for the old type 
uh, razor. This is the one that I'm going to be using in the uh, shave with the 1918 razor blades. They are advertising it as an adjustable razor. This is a twist adjustable razor, very, very similar to what we use from Phoenix Shaving with the, in the Ascension line of uh, safety razors, where you can just uh, twist it a little bit and the tension on the blade opens up the blade gap a little bit and the razor head stays very, very stable. Well, it looks like this is what the old type razor was able to do. It was able to uh, act as a twist adjustable razor. You could just turn that handle a little bit and open up the blade gap uh, and, uh, you know, increase the, uh, the aggression of the razor or decrease the aggression of the razor. How about that? <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. Wow. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be doing a, um, an adjustable uh, razor shave with the old type, uh, but I am definitely looking forward to uh, giving it a couple of turns and seeing if it seeing if it works with that 1918 razor blade. Now, as Mark Bagwell explained to me, probably doesn't work with a newer, more modern razor blade. I think the key here is the thickness of the old 1918 razor blades. So um, I'm really looking forward to. Uh, I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited to uh, have this shave, shoot the uh, shoot the video, do the review, and uh, sharing it with you. So I'm looking forward to that. So my thanks to Mark Bagwell and also to Matt Pisarsik uh, for allowing me to show this ad on the Monday Morning Mailbag. Uh, and when you get a chance, get up to Razor Emporium and check out what they have up there. Uh, just a wealth of information regarding uh, vintage Gillette razors. And he also offers some wonderful, wonderful vintage Gillette razors that uh, have been replated and tuned up. And uh, so if you're looking for a really, really special vintage razor, check out the Razor Emporium. Uh, they do an absolutely fantastic job with bringing these vintage razors uh, up to modern standards so you can shave with them every single day and they'll last another hundred years. So thanks again to uh, Mark Bagwell and also to Matt Pisarsik. Well, speaking of vintage razors and vintage blades, viewer Kevin Laird very, very kindly sent along something else for the, uh, for the show, for the channel. Wanted to share this with you. This is something else we're going to be doing down the road. This is absolutely wonderful. Uh, you may recall, uh, recently I did a review and a shave with the uh, Gem Micromatic. Boy, these are great. I've, I've called these the best kept secret in the shaving world because you can get these for uh, five, ten dollars sometimes, and they are in really, really good shape. Uh, I polished this one up using a Razor Emporium, uh, Razor Emporium polishing cloth. Look how that cleaned up. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. And of course, it takes a, a gem razor blade, a single edge razor blade, and uh, we've talked about that. But uh, Kevin Laird mentioned to me that at one time, Jem made a reversible razor blade for this razor. And he very kindly sent along a pack of them. This blade has two edges, front and back. Uh, so that, um, now they're wrapped up. I haven't opened up one yet. And uh, you know what? Let's open, it up. Let's open up one right now. Let's open up one right now and see if we can't see what this looks like. Boy, this is a... Another <laughs> another wonderful vintage razor blade. Okay, I'm going to very, very... Oh, yeah, there it is. It comes in a... It looks like it comes in a little cardboard tuck of some kind, right there like that, okay? Not sure how... Let's, okay, so let's put the wrapper down and let's open up... Oh, there it is. It flips open like that. Okay, here it is. Okay, so there are two edges here. Check that out. How about that? Two edges. And what you would do is, and this is for the Micromatic, according to what Kevin is telling me. My gosh, that's in good shape. Look at that. Look at that. That's in, be <laughs> that's in beautiful shape. Check that out, folks. Is that upside down? Let me, let me turn that around. Okay. So you can get a good look at it. There it is. How about that? Is that right side up? Let me take a look. Hang on one minute. No, I think I had it right the first way. Oh, look, it's numbered too. One, two. It's numbered. One and two on one side and three and four on the other side. Okay, so there it is. So the idea here is you would put this into your gem micromatic razor. Let me get this in here. So, okay, hang on one minute. Let me get it in there. There it is. 
Okay, so you get it in your gem micromatic razor like that, and then you tighten it down, and there you go. Now, you can go ahead and have his, you know, have shaves with this edge right here, and then after it gets to the point where it gets tuggy, it gets it starts to pull a little bit, then you open it up and you flip the blade over and you have a fresh edge uh, without having to grab a new blade. So you just flip this around. <laughs> How about that? Absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to a shaving with this razor and this blade as well. My gosh, absolutely fantastic. So we have a lot to look forward to here on the channel as we go forward with uh, vintage razors, a 100-year-old shave. And this is probably going to be every bit of 75 years is what I'm thinking. Kevin, if you can tell me what year these razor blades go back to, sure would appreciate it. Now, hang on, I just dropped it there. You know what? I'm going to wrap this up after I turn the camera off because it has, you know, two sharp edges there, and I don't want to fumble through it looking into the camera and not seeing what I'm doing there. So I'll do that after uh, the camera turns off here. But yeah, this is absolutely wonderful. Uh, reversible blades, two edges from Gem, something they, something that they marketed and sold for their Micromatic razor. Now, if you have, if you have had any experience shaving with this blade in a Gem Micromatic razor, please comment below and let us know. If you have any additional history regarding this, please let us know. Uh, in the comments below. My thanks, my sincere, heartfelt thanks to uh, Kevin Laird for very, very kindly sending these along. That is huge. Thank you very, very much, Kevin. Really do appreciate it. Really looking forward to using and reviewing these um, on the show, on the program, uh, on the channel. Really, really terrific. And they're, they are in such great shape. That's the thing. My gosh. And if you've never used the Gem Micromatic, you know what? Uh, seek these out, get them. You can get uh, the, uh, the gem razor blades that are made specifically for shaving and they really do give you an outstanding shave. You're going to have to change up your technique, absolutely, and you're going to have, have to use a much lighter touch. Uh, believe me, you're going to have to use a much lighter touch, but they really do deliver some wonderful, wonderful shaves. I just did a recent uh, shave and review of uh, with this Micromatic um, Gosh, maybe a, a month, a month and a half ago, something like that. Check that out. If I can find it, I'll link it below so you can take a look at that shave as well. Yeah, uh, my thanks again to Kevin Leard for very generously and thoughtfully sending along these uh, reversible double edge uh, gem micromatic blades uh, for the uh, single edge micromatic razor. Thanks again, Kevin. Really do appreciate it. And that wraps up another Monday Morning Mailbag for this week. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share. Please subscribe. Please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below. Let me know. Check out all the wonderful artisan soap makers and sellers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen right now. They make and offer some wonderful artisan shave soap. They also offer some wonderful wet shaving gear to enhance your traditional wet shave. The next time you're online, please take a moment. Pay them a visit. I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, check out my Amazon product page at Amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerady, where you'll find all the Amazon listed products that I review on this channel. Organize and categorize so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Hey, we have another Double Take cartoon puzzle this week. Try to find the differences between the two cartoon panels. If you need more time, just pause the video. Or try to find all the differences before time runs out. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.